Hi everyone, this is lecture five, and in this lecture I'm going to be talking to you about the electromagnetic spectrum. And this is something you hopefully remember from physics from last year. Um, we're going to review it a little bit, and then we're going to talk about why it's important to astronomers. Now hopefully what you remember is that what we can see in visible light is only part of all of the waves that are the same, that are made up of vibrating electric and magnetic fields. And um, it's just one of several things, including radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays. All of these things put together make up the electromagnetic spectrum when you look at all of them together. In this particular picture, you can see all of those things listed um, in order of low frequency up to high frequency. So radio has the lowest frequency, gamma has the highest. And visible light all falls in somewhere in here between infrared and ultraviolet, between 4.3 times 10 to the 14 and 7.5 times 10 to the 14th. So you can see they just really couldn't even fit in a whole section for visible light. And they've got um, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet listed in that same low frequency to high frequency order right here. Um, if you want to get something like this that you can just have for yourself, I would suggest you look at figure 5.7 in your textbook. That will also have them in wavelength order, energy order. It'll give you some sources of these things on Earth and also what's important um, in each of those regions in space. Now, just in terms of a list, if you would rather just have a list, because you do need to memorize this, um, here's a list. I've got them, in this case, I went from short wavelength to long wavelength. And as we know, things that have short wavelength have high frequency. Short wavelength goes with high frequency. And then if you think from the last lecture that energy is equal to a constant times the frequency, high frequency goes with high energy. As I said, I do want you to memorize this. Um, one very useful trick is to notice what's up at the top here, these three guys, gamma rays, x-rays, and ultraviolet. And just from everyday experience, you should recognize that there's something in common about those. Those are the dangerous ones. Those are the ones you don't want to get a lot of. Obviously, gamma rays are the things that kill you in nuclear explosions. Um, and then x-rays, you know, um, can be dangerous if you get too much of them. Ultraviolet, uh, that causes skin cancer, for instance. That's what we get skin cancer from the sun from. So the high energy is what makes them so dangerous. If you can remember that the dangerous ones are the high energy ones, you can kind of figure out everything else from there. Whereas radio waves, for instance, are around us all the time, and they don't cause any damage to us at all because they have very low energy. Uh, if you're trying to copy this down, I would suggest that you sort of pause this for a moment and write everything down and then resume the video once you're done writing. You probably would like to put that hint in that the high energy ones are dangerous because that will help you remember it. Now, why do we care? As astronomers, well, Astronomers study objects in space in all different kinds of wavelengths. Um, you can find these pictures online. I put the names of the objects in there very deliberately. Um, you can search for the name and then put in multi-wavelength or something like that. You can probably get a copy of this picture for yourself. Um, this is a galaxy called Centaurus A, and it's a really interesting galaxy we'll probably talk more about later in the semester. And what you're looking at in the big picture, this part, is actually a composite of three other pictures. If you were just to get an ordinary telescope and take a picture of it in visible light, this is what you would see. That sort of white thing with this kind of dark cloud across the middle. You can see the dark cloud there. And then they've taken two other pictures and superimposed those. Now they have to give false color to these because obviously we can't see radio waves or x-rays. So where you see purple, that's what it looks like in radio waves. Now if you look at the picture, 
The radio picture looks absolutely nothing like the visible picture. We see something totally different when we look in radio waves and in visible light. And then similarly, okay, here's x-ray. Well, here's this sort of line thing. You can think that that line probably goes with this little line here in the radio. There's the dark clouds that we saw in the visible. There's also this sort of puffy thing out here that if you look at the composite does seem to be sort of the end point of the radio. When you get to the end point of the radio, you suddenly get this huge x-ray thing out here. So we're seeing completely different things when we look in these different wavelengths, and that gives us different information about the galaxy. And when we start to study galaxies like Centaurus A, which are called active galaxies, and if you want to know more about those, we can talk about that in our discussion. But if you want to know more about these, uh, you really need to know about all these different parts of the spectrum. Here's another one that I like just partly for the name. This is something that's actually seriously called the Sombrero Galaxy. Um, this time they're saying that they're going to use green to represent visible light. So that's what it would look like in visible light. You sort of see this uh, hazy thing and then this dark circle sort of going around it. When you go to infrared, you can see that that circle really corresponds to a sort of disk around the middle. That's like the brim of the sombrero. And in x-ray, you don't see that at all. It's just this sort of vague haze, and they're using blue to represent x-rays. So you don't see that dark lane at all in the x-rays. So there's got to be something different going on that's making the x-rays versus what's making the infrared, because we're seeing totally different structures and visible must be someplace in the middle. So by looking at all these different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, we can find out different characteristics of the object. We saw a totally different structure. Another thing that would be indicated by these differences would be differences in temperature. Remember, x-rays have high energy. Radio or infrared have low energy. So you would probably expect that the parts where the x-rays are are pretty hot versus where the parts where the infrared or the radio are, those are not so hot. So different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum can give us different information about the objects. And so it's very important when we study things in space that we look in all the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum and not just one. This is something we're going to come back to over and over and over again, so that's just a little introduction to it.